Hi, I'm Art Bergeron, and welcome to this uh, um, Bergeron Briefs. As uh, if you, as you may or may not know, these are all designed as 15-minute uh, question and answer or other seg or or other format segments, so as to allow you, a senior, or you who've got a family member who's a senior, um, to understand in more depth a topic that I really can't or don't have the time to discuss in depth in the course of one of my seminars because my seminars on you know various topics you know talking to my about my friends frank and mary uh tend to deal with a whole bunch of stuff so my friend steve peppy uh i have known for years and years and he is an attorney uh at, who works uh at a reverse mortgage company yet again yesterday i was talking to somebody about a reverse mortgage and they said oh we'd never do that they get, they're going to take my house and i was like oh so steve um i thought that i would do this with steve i try to point everybody and i'm going to try to point everybody to this version of briefs episode so that they can get a sense of how reverse mortgages work so steve first of all thank you very much for coming on i really appreciate it arthur thank you for having me i'm thrilled um, to be here and, and, and so so I know that you've been working with language for quite a while. Can you just give folks, you know, kind of a 30 second brief background about you? Sure. So I uh, live in Milford, Massachusetts with, with my beautiful wife, Kerry. And I, as you said, I am a licensed attorney, but I'm not actively practicing law anymore. I made a career change about 18 years ago over to the reverse mortgage industry because I just saw what it was as a product, what it was doing for people that wanted to take my skill set of residential real estate and estate planning and use it this way. So I've been in the reverse mortgage industry for over 18 years. I am a former reverse mortgage counselor, um, trained and certified then by the AARP Foundation. Um, used to work as a staff attorney at a nonprofit in Stoneham, Massachusetts, but um, that's a little bit about me. I, I help homeowners from all around the Commonwealth and even some other states who want to access that home equity to have better cash flow in, in their retirement. Thank, thank you. And so this isn't an ad for Steve Pepe. <clears throat> I just want to tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, that he's dealt with a lot of my clients and they've all been very satisfied. That's everything that I know about Steve Pepe. That's great. Um, so Steve... <laughs> So, so I'm going to talk to my person who I talked to yesterday, right? Who, who, the, so their situation, I'm just going to kind of so use this as a situation so you can kind of talk about reverse mortgages, right? So yep. they're older, right? And they yep. are, um, uh, they've got kids, they've got limited savings, their income mm -hmm. is okay because they both got retirements. They both worked in, in for government jobs, right? Um, mm -hmm. But but and, and they have they have a house that's worth about six hundred thousand dollars. They're like eighty in their early eighties, um, and they've got a mortgage. They've got a mortgage right now that's a, like a hundred thousand dollars, but they're paying a very high monthly payment because it's an old first mortgage, on yep. which they are still making big payments. A lot of which is really you know repayment of principal. But you yep. know, and, and they're able to meet the cash flow, but it just makes it you know tighter for them, right? Right. And so one of the things that they were talking about was, you know, how do we kind of deal deal with all of this? We don't have a lot of cash set aside. We really want to stay in our house, yep. right? We don't want anybody to take our house, yep. right? And 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 for typically folks, you know, I, they, they, what they'll know about is what what used to be called, called a home equity or a, line, a home equity, what is now called a home equity line of credit or a HELOC, which they would mm -hmm. get from their local bank. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they've seen the occasional ad for a reverse mortgage and heard something from somebody. And that's what they know. So so can you talk to folks, talk to folks about, you know, in, in this situation and then we can talk about others if we have time. But this is the classic situation. And I hit it a lot. What 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 should people be thinking about in terms of comparing either staying what they're doing right now or getting a HELOC or getting a reverse mortgage? Sure. So. Uh, you hit it on the head, Art, in that that is the classic, classic scenario that this program was designed for. By this program, I mean the, the reverse mortgage program federally insured, insured by the Federal Housing Administration that was created during the Reagan administration. So if these folks were to just keep doing what they're doing now, they could keep plugging away, sending in those monthly mortgage payments like I send to my mortgage lender, but I'm still gainfully employed and working. 
they are retired and their income is fixed. So it sounds like they're doing okay right now. Let's say this is Frank and Mary doing this, but throw in one life event into the mix, throw in a spouse dying, throw in a spouse getting sick and having increased in-home care costs, throw in both of those things, throw in a major home repair or, or changes that need to be made to the house to make it safer. All of a sudden, that plan that they've been treading water in is suddenly unsustainable. Something's got to give, right? They're on a fixed income and they have savings that are slowly being depleted and they're living longer and they want to stay where they are. If one of those things I mentioned in, in most common lately is the in-home care situation, right? Habits, they're going to, they could potentially jeopardize their housing because they might not be able to afford their monthly mortgage payment or they might not be able to afford their real estate taxes. And that's a big problem as well. Right. So they jeopardize their ability to one, remain in that home, two, live, I'm not talking about a lavish lifestyle, just a comfortable retirement, be able to go out to eat now and then, just not laying awake at night worrying about money. So that's where the reverse mortgage comes in because if they were to knock out that traditional mortgage with a reverse mortgage, what it would do is put an end to that principal and interest payment that they're making every month. That goes away because that mortgage is paid off and replaced with a reverse mortgage. And guess what? Big shock to a lot of people, the lender doesn't become the owner of your home, right? You're still the owner of your home or your trust is still the owner of your home, but you don't have the mandatory mortgage payment that you need to make anymore. So I'd be pointing out to Frank and Mary, your principal and interest payment goes away. So think of it like you just gave yourself a raise by whatever that dollar amount say that's $900 a month or $1,300 a month. That's significant over time. Not only can you have a comfortable retirement, but then you might be able to start replenish the savings. Okay. So in addition to knocking out that mortgage payment, they also will have access to more funds through the reverse mortgage that they don't have to take right away, nor should they, unless they really need to. But they can have the safety net of an additional line of credit there for things like paying off credit card debt, paying off car loans, new roof on the house, the in-home care that might be inevitable, right? That isn't the medical care um, that Mass Health or Medicare could pay for, but is the other stuff, the cooking, the cleaning, the shopping, the housekeeping, and all of that that you're paying out of pocket for. Now, if they were to go the direction of a home equity line of credit or a HELOC, I would argue, and it's my opinion, that's the most dangerous move that they can make. And unfortunately, that's the move that their banker or mortgage professional is more than eager to fit them into. And it's a very perilous move, and I would argue a very careless move, because then you're taking someone on a fixed income and you're saddling them with a new mortgage payment that they have to make, that they always sell it as, hey, it starts out as interest only payments for the first five years, the first 10 years, but then guess what? Then it graduates into what they call fully amortized payments of principal and interest. And you're expected to make that payment at a time where you're on a fixed income and your savings have dwindled even more. Not to mention those are adjustable rate loans. And so your monthly payments, even if you're in an interest only payments, could go up and up and up. Very hazardous move for someone like that to get a HELOC. But there are too many bankers and mortgage companies eager to set you up into one. And I'd argue it's, it's dangerous. The reverse mortgage eliminates your mortgage payment, gives you liquidity for other funds, for other needs as you age. You own your home, fully insured by the federal government. Say what you will about the federal government. They do very well with this program. They've got it right. There's a boatload of consumer protections designed to protect Frank and Mary, so they're not going to be swindled or taken advantage of. 
and it's it's just the best way to set them up for a more secure retirement. So so just just get into one piece of the nitty gritty because in, inevitably when you're talking about reverse mortgages, <clears throat> the the immediate suspicion is this is too good to be true. What do you mean? I don't have to make any payments because that's why people think that you know that somehow the reverse mortgage company is just getting their house because mentally yeah. they're like, how else is this going to work? Yeah. So 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 just kind of talk talk me through that. So this these people they get a six six hundred thousand dollar house. Say they got a hundred thousand dollar mortgage, right? Say mm -hmm. they're going to need to borrow enough to pay off that mortgage. Say they're going to yeah. need to borrow enough to pay for any of the, the you know the closing costs and all that jazz on the reverse mortgage. Yep. So, so now, you know, from the day that that starts, there's interest accruing on that money because they just borrowed some money. Say they borrowed a hundred, they just borrowed like $120,000, right? Mm -hmm. So now, now comes the end of the month and, and, and there's no bill. So what happens to the interest that just accrued on that money? Yeah, sure. So it's consumer credit. It's a loan. So you're right, Art. And that interest is charged on the money that they've borrowed. So let's say they borrowed $120,000. A month goes by, they get a statement in the mail. It's not a bill, but it's a statement, and they're going to see one month of interest has been charged on that $120,000. That interest they were charged gets added into the balance of what gets paid back in the future when Frank and Mary don't live there anymore, when they die, or when they both move out for more than a year for a health reason, or they sell. That's when the 120000 and that interest gets paid back. The analogy I use, Arthur, is a tab at a restaurant. Second month comes by. They get the monthly statement. There is interest charged on the first 120000 and also that interest that accrued on the first month. So more interest added in the balance. The tab is growing and growing and growing over the months and years that they live there. And so they're going to see a rising loan balance over time. Uh, Long-term history of real estate appreciation is that homes gradually keep going up in value too. But when they die, sell, or move out for more than a year, that's when that tab is, is settled. That's when they're paying back however much it is. Added up over the years, all paid back at that time in right. almost all the cases that is lower than what the house is worth so they or their heirs get whatever's left over and a little more than four percent of the time the reverse mortgage uses up everything so worst case scenario you'll be in is that um the reverse mortgage gets everything from the sale of the house and that's it but nobody's right. digging into their pocket to come up with right. extra cash. You're not paying anything. Your kids aren't paying anything. There isn't this kind of like hidden, oh my God, this is going to be like a bomb that's going to kind of blow up and it's going to just, it's going to like screw up everything. That's and, right. So there's interest right. that has to be repaid. It's not right. too good to be true. There's a cost. It's all deferred till the end, but it helps your cash flow while you're living there. So I'm just going to mention one other thing. And that is, you know, I'm often talking to folks like the folks I talked to yesterday, who's mm -hmm. one of whose big concerns was, how do we protect the house if we eventually need to qualify for mass health? The Massachusetts name for the Medicaid program, either because we need nursing home care or need a lot of care at home in order to avoid going to a nursing home. And what I'll constantly tell people is the way you do that is you transfer an interest in your home called the remainder interest, the interest that starts when you die, to a third party. It could be an irrevocable trust, it could be your kids to somebody. That interest is going to kick in after you die. You keep a life estate in the property, so you keep control of the property while you're alive, right? Right. Um, in the and 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 that way, if you later need to qualify for Mass Health, then Mass Health will put a lien on that life estate. Um, but if as long as you hold the property until you die, when you die, the life estate evaporates, and therefore so does the lien. But the catch is, if you have an existing mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if it, other than a reverse mortgage. Mm -hmm. If you have an existing mortgage, to transfer that remainder interest to any third party is a violation of the mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a HELOC, to transfer that interest is a violation of the HELOC, right? Mm -hmm. Only right. in the case of a reverse mortgage can you then can you have the reverse mortgage, keep this life estate, and transfer this other interest away 
without violating the mortgage. Now, many people don't kind of care about this because they're like, oh, well, they're never going to pick this up anyway. The bank's not going to pick it up. But if you're one of those many seniors who worries about this, this gets rid of that worry. So, yes. So, so I, I, I know, Steve, yeah, I thought that was a great summary of kind of the way, the way all of this works, right? Um, yep. And, and, and if, if folks need to reach you or they want to talk to you more about this, I know we're going to have a, you know, a, like a slide on that at the end, but what's the best phone, phone number that they could reach you? Best phone number for me in Milford is area code 508-282-6329. Um, that's my business cell. That's the best way to reach me. Great. And once, and once again, so this isn't an ad for Steve Pepe. I just know that he's done a lot of good stuff for my clients. That's all. You know, many reverse mortgages com companies work the same way. So if you're interested in this, talk to anybody you want about a reverse mortgage. Talk to Steve, talk to other people, figure out what your, you know, what the best deal is. But the point is, don't throw away this option. This is a crucial option for a lot of seniors. Steve, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. Folks, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you get you tune into other Bergeron briefs if you think that they can help you so deal with a particular problem. Thank you very much. Thank you.